Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Tech Steve Project. And if you haven't figured it out, I'm Steve. Today, I want to pass along some things to avoid. And some advice. Nothing major. So you just heard about Linux. This open source thing. Sounds great, right? And now... You're thinking of diving deep into the wonderful world of Linux. There are some things you might want to consider first. Linux is not Windows. And I'll get to that. But first, I'm going to talk about customization. You see, Linux graphically can be customized to look like Windows, Mac, or Android for that matter. If you can imagine it, Linux can made <laughs> Linux can be made to look like it. Man, tongue tied. And FYI, Linux has over 20 desktop environments and at least twice that many in window managers. Between the 2 plus display servers currently being used by most distributions out there, one being Xorg and the other is Wayland. While the Windows desktop, well, with the Windows desktop, what you see is pretty much what you get. At least for most people, they don't look past all the GUIs. GUI, for those who don't know, stands for Graphical User Environment. Your desktop and its GUIs running the programs. Now Mac, their desktop tends to be more flashy than Windows. Although some desktop environments in Linux rival Macs for, for the eye candy. When you dig deeper into the file systems on these uh, on these OSs and how you install and get software are completely different between the three. Windows, you pretty much search the internet to find software. Mac has its walled gardens, or garden rather, its ecosystem if you will. Linux, you have what it's called repositories and package managers. Windows, is attempting to recreate its own version of its own repository and its version of its own store similar to Mac and Android now I don't know much about Mac honestly I think there's one to two package managers maybe I'm not sure it's based off of Unix and Unix is almost out of the picture I read somewhere anyways with Linux that's where you get the majority of your software Anyways, 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 that is where you get the majority of your software distributed by the Linux distribution you're, you're using, minus a few exceptions like flat pack images or snaps. They're through Ubuntu's repositories and that's Ubuntu specific uh, software. Okay, with all that out of the way, now let's talk about your expectations. What is it you're looking for in Linux? The use cases for Linux far surpasses Windows or Mac in my opinion. Humanity is using Linux on Mars and our satellites. Starlink is one example, not to mention some research projects in Antarctica mapping the ice shells. NASA uses Linux in a ton of things. It's primarily Red Hat Enterprise, which is part of their backbone and security needs. And scientists and developers use desktop distros like Debian, Lin Linux Mint, MX Linux, Ubuntu, and others. Off subject here. I just watched a commercial for a line of Lenovo laptops with Windows and how they sent one up to the ISS. And blah, 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 blah. Come explore with us. What a load of crap. One laptop they sent up there. The others, Linux. And so were components of the operating system on the ISS. Sorry, had to throw that in there. I'll link some articles down below in the description if you want to read about Linux and the ISS and in the guidance systems of SpaceX rockets and Dragon. Getting back on the subject here. Now, if you do a search on the best Linux distros for new users, you're going to be disappointed. More likely pissed off and just having a bad experience. Trust me when I say, <laughs> been there, done that. Why? 
Most of the articles you'll find are outdated. Recently, I was reflecting on my own song and dance with Linux over the years. And I got to thinking, what would be the best way to find the right distro for a new Linux user? And then it dawned on me, it's simple. Focus on the desktop environment. Every distro has access to all the desktop environments, all the window managers. My advice, research the different Linux desktop environments. And next, when you find one that speaks to you, then think about, is this going to work for me? Why? Because when you rip off the hood, most distros out there are pretty much the same, unless your needs are specific like gaming or security or something specific. Now, the best thing to do would be to get something like VirtualBox and fire up a VM or get yourself a USB stick and put it on there and run it in the live environment. That way you can check it out, get used to it and see if it's something you like. Plus, that way you can check out all the environments that Linux has to offer. Now let's talk a little bit about the terminal. In Windows, they call it the command line. Most Windows users never touch the command line, which is fine for, for them. There are distributions out there that allow you to not have to touch the terminal at all. Linux Mint is one of them. Things have gotten a lot easier since I started using Linux. The need to use the terminal has dropped significantly. Most of the time you don't even have to touch it at all, honestly. For me, the terminal is just better. You have more control over what's going on in the background if you learn the commands in the terminal. The reason behind that is if you run into some program that just doesn't want to install, you can open up a terminal, be it apt, DNF, or Pac-Man, Arch Linux's, Arch Linux's installer, uh, excuse me, package manager. When you use the terminal, you have more control over your system and how it's installed. There were times that <laughs> something I did forked my system and when I went to go log back into it, it dropped me down to a TTY. And most of the time, I was able to fix it by doing a little bit of Googling. All I'm suggesting is just give it a try. If it's not for you, it's not for you. Like I said, there are distributions out there to where you probably will never have to touch the terminal, ever. But this one's getting kind of long, and I'm getting tired, and I'm not very good at this. So, <laughs> uh, thanks for listening and watching. Uh, eventually, I plan on hooking up some cameras from time to time, see how that works, see if it works for me. And if it does, maybe I'll start using, using them permanently. Well, boys and girls and whoever's and whatsoever's, that's it for now. This old fart signing off. I'll yak at you later and, ah, should I do it? Subscribe if you think I'm good enough. Grab a sledgehammer and smash that bell notification thingy. Um, I will be leaving some links down in the comments on NASA and SpaceX. Uh, it's interesting reading. Um, they use Linux in their uh, workstations. Uh, SpaceX uses them in, in their rockets. So, if you get a chance, go pop on down there and give some of those articles a read. Um, and I put one video down there. That's the one, if you look closely on their laptops and their displays, you'll see Ubuntu on a laptop, and I believe the LXQT desktop on another one. Which I thought was very interesting on what they were doing. Mapping the ice shelves and stuff with Linux. Alrighty. I'm out of here. You have a good day or night. Wherever you are. Stay out of trouble. And if you can't, try not to get caught. <laughs> Take it easy.